Hi my friends, in today's video I'm going to make this jewelry cup in curly maple. Hi my friends, how are you? I hope everybody's fine. My name is Daniel Villarino. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today we are going to use this piece of curly maple to make a shallow cup that will be used to hold jewels. And the curly maple is basically maple. The tree grows really big and heavy or the branches uh, bend and the compression of the fibers form these S's that make the grain to pop up like in a three-dimensional uh, form like you can see there or on this side. So I, I hope it's going to be a nice UL uh, container. That's today's project. Let's get to work. I already used the bandsaw to trim the maple blank to a circle and I place it in the cold jaws. I place a lab center in the telestock and I press it against the blank to keep it secure in the jaws. As the red arrow points, as soon as I exert some pressure against the blank, that closes the gap between the wood and the jaws. Because of the size and weight of these jaws, it is better to turn below 800 RPMs. With a 3 8 of an inch ball gouge, I will throw up the surface. Also, I will remove the step that the blank had, but leaving enough material in the central part to form a tenon to later hold the piece. I raise the support so it will be placed at the lathe axis height. In the caliper, I have a measure just barely above the closed chuck jaws. Only the left point of the caliper should touch the wooden surface. The right point, as shown by the arrow, is just a reference and never should touch the wood. So you can see it better, I highlight the mark in black. I begin to shape the tenon I will use to hold the wood piece. I would like to mention that although in this particular case I used the cold jaws to hold the blank, this procedure could have been done using a glue block, a faceplate or even between centers. The important thing was to form the tenon so later we can turn the blank around and hold it in the chuck. With a skewed chisel I define the dovetail shape of the tenon. At the right side in the images, you can see in orange the approximate shape I gave the blank, and in blue a section of the chuck jaws, and how, when the jaws close, they fit perfectly against the tenon to hold securely the blank. In the tailstock, I placed a Jacobs chuck with a 1 inch and a half Forstner bit that I will use to make a perforation to hold my logo coin. This recess is deeper than the thickness of my logo coin because eventually I will remove the tenon and also I am going to dish out the base towards the center so that will give more stability to the cup when it is placed on the table. Here you can see the detail of the dovetail shape of the lateral wall of the tenor. I remove the cold jaws from the chuck and in their place I put the dovetail jaws. When placing the blank in the chuck, you can see that I exert pressure in the center of the piece so that the tenon base will rest on the frontal part of the jaws and that although the tenon is large enough to be held securely by the jaws, it does not reach the bottom of the chuck. Here, I already have started the work in the cup's bowl. The process is very similar to many other bowls we have done before. 
The ripples that the gouge is leaving are due to me being impatient and speeding the cut too much. By cutting too much material and doing it too fast, for a brief moment I raise just a hair the heel of the bevel. The gouge cuts just a bit deeper than intended, which causes a micro jump and ripple when I rectify the situation and wrap the bevel again. You can solve this issue by making lighter cuts or taking more time with the cut and being more careful on always keeping the bevel rubbing slightly the wood since that will make the cut more stable. A very sharp scraper can be also very effective in smoothing the surface and eliminating those ripples. The cuts I am making with the scraper are light and you can see they produce very thin shavings. I will start the sanding with 120 grit sandpaper. I will try to leave the cap wall relatively thin and even though this wood is pretty dry, sometimes with the sanding and the friction polish treatment, the heat produced can move the fibers a little. Therefore, to avoid that movement, I will do the whole process of finishing the bowl of the cap, which is the most visible part of the piece, while I still have a considerable mass of wood on the external side. Already did the 150 and 240 grits and after finishing with the 320 grit sandpaper I cleaned the surface with alcohol. This raises the ends of the fibers and that allows the following sandpapers to produce a better sanding and alcohol evaporates very fast. I sand with finer and finer sandpapers until 600 grit. If the lathe has the capability of rotating in reverse, alternating the rotation direction while sanding also produces better results. As I always do, I will complement the sanding process with the application of my homemade abrasive paste. The paste will leave an excellent surface for the application of the friction polish. It is important to shake well the friction polish before each application so its components will be well mixed. After some 5 applications of the friction polish, you can see the results, and sincerely, this curly maple has a really spectacular grain. To turn the side of the cap, I will rotate at around 1500 RPMs. I will make cuts trying to form a valley. This valley will be located closer to the base than to the top part of the cap. The external curve of the bowl will follow the internal curve, leaving an even wall thickness. I reposition the tool rest so I can get it closer to the wood and have a more stable cut. I will do this often depending on whether I am cutting the bowl or the base of the cup. And I will always be aware of where the tool rest ends. I will use the caliper often to check what part of the wall is thicker and requires more thinning. Although this piece is like a small ball because of its diameter, the work I am doing is mostly spindle work. So 
So I am switching to a spindle gauge that will give me a better reach and maneuverability. Once more, I relocate the tool rest, especially because in the cuts I will perform next, I will get pretty close to the chuck jaws, and I need the most stable position possible for the gouge to work in a very precise way. Finally, I complete the cove that forms the cup neck and connects the bowl to the base. I measure once more with the caliper and close to the base I still have one quarter of an inch, so I can remove a little more material. The treatment for the finish is identical to the internal part of the cup. First sanding with finer and finer sandpapers, passing through 120, 180, 240, 320, 400 and 600 grits. Then abrasive paste and finally friction polish. If you want to watch the videos of preparation of homemade abrasive paste or friction polish, the links appear in the top right side of the screen or in the video description. I remove from the chuck the dovetail jaws and in their place I put, once again, the cold jaws. To preserve the finish of the cup's mouth, I use a piece of cotton cloth from an old t-shirt to protect the wood. I place in the tailstock a live center and I bring it close to the cup's base, ensuring that it will get right in the center left by the Forstner bead perforation. With the ball gouge, I will completely eliminate the tenon. In the last two passes, I will dish out a bit towards the center of the base. This way, the base will have a slightly concave surface and it will sit on top of the table, supported by the external part of this circular shape, giving the piece more stability. If because of the cuts or the sanding the form left were convex, then the cup will be wobbling on its base. I finish the base in the usual way. With the point tool I make a few small grooves so the CA glue will have a better hold. With CA glue, I attach my logo coin. The following steels show the beauty of this curly maple. I made 
made several similar cups. This one in walnut, this one in oak, and another in curly maple but with a less visible grain. And here you can see the four together. Okay, my friends, there you have it, this little bowl or cup for jewels in curly maple. You can see the grain, really beautiful. You can see it from this side as well. And here is the bottom with my logo coin. I am really happy with the result. So I hope you also enjoy the video. If that's the case, don't forget to click on the like button below, make comments, and if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel, please do so. There will appear the button to facilitate the subscription, and it will be until the next one. Cheers!